and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here for the very first time, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name's Hannah and on this channel, I post a lot of anti-MLM content. I'll link a playlist right here for you. This has all of my anti-MLM videos on it, but this series, the horror story series is one of my more popular ones. There's also a playlist dedicated for just these videos as well. In these horror story videos, I take submissions of different experiences that people have sent into me regarding MLM companies. That could be that they were in one themselves. That could be that they have a family member in an MLM. Maybe they've been pitched for an MLM or some kind of MLM adjacent type experience. All of that is good. And if at any point you have your own that you would like to send in to me, the instructions for how to do that are in the description box below. Super easy. You just send me an email. I put it in a special folder and I pick out a few when I'm filming these videos. I have five stories for you today, so let's read them. This story says, hi, Hannah, I'm writing this early Christmas morning. So I hope you had a happy holidays whenever you read this and that you and your baby are doing well. Thank you. I hope you had a great holiday season as well. Due to the nature of the non MLM company I used to work for who is featured fairly heavily in this story, I would like it if you keep me anonymous. I live in Orlando and my horror story takes place while I was a housekeeper for a deluxe hotel for one of the large theme parks down here. I was affectionately called mousekeeping if that gives you an idea on the size of this company. Yes, I'm very familiar with this company. I think we've all taken the hints here. Of course, as a housekeeper, I have a ton of non MLM horror stories but one of the worst actually involves Herbalife. I'm not sure if he's still involved with Herbalife, but at one time, the actual real CEO of Herbalife, not just a hyped up rep, was a man who was also once the president of the international division of this huge theme park and movie company. This may be how and why my hotel ended up hosting a huge Herbalife meeting in our convention center. To my knowledge, this is the only MLM that has been hosted by this company. Now that is a connection I did not know about. Learn something new every day. Every morning at work, we would have a meeting with all the housekeepers where our leadership would sort of prep us for the day with any information that might affect how we did our jobs. All we were told that weekend was that there was a quote, large health and supplement company here and that we should quote, be careful around any unidentifiable powders. Originally, I didn't understand why they told us this. Of course, we should be careful around unidentified powders. You never know what people do in their hotel rooms. Trust me. But when they let us out of this meeting and I was able to get into my first rooms of the weekend, I finally understood. I have some truly horrible stories from housekeeping, but I swear the worst rooms I ever saw were the rooms that these Herbalife Huns were in. I guess Herbalife had blocked off a bunch of rooms for the Huns to stay in because every single room I had that weekend was completely covered in mystery pills and powdered soups and dehydrated drinks. And I mean covered. Every Every time I would wipe a surface, the rag would come away with different colors from whatever supplement had been spilled on the desk or the sink or the TV unit or nightstand. There were pills everywhere. I think that the convention might have given them some free samples of stuff because some of the weird things I found in the room were all exactly the same. I just remember thinking that it was fairly obvious that the Herbalife rooms had children and I would hate to be one of the kids that got to come to this theme park but had to wait around for their parents to get done with their pill emma before they could spend time with them and have fun in this magical place. I think that speaks volumes that clearly as a housekeeper, I can only begin to imagine what kinds of things you encounter in people's rooms. Quite honestly, those would be some stories I would love to read too. But it's the fact that you're recalling this particular weekend as sticking out among the rest as being some of the worst rooms you've ever seen on your job. I feel like that says a lot. In addition to the disgusting condition of the room, rooms, who wants to sleep in a bed where there's powdered supplements in the sheets? If I ever saw the guests in the room, I of course was pitched the opportunity. They would walk around the hotel and probably the parks too with buttons that said, lose weight, ask me how, own your own business, ask me how. That is so cringy and so uncomfortable. I would never want to walk around with a button inviting people to ask me anything at all. <laughs> but you can see why they do it. They want people to show interest because that's how they sell the product and get recruits. And it's a lot easier if you're walking around a theme park of hundreds of thousands of people and they're coming up to you and starting that conversation. I wonder how effective this actually was though. Cause I feel like just by nature of wearing a button that says lose weight, ask me how, or own your own business, ask me how, it's clear that that person is gonna pitch you something. I wonder how many people who are just trying to enjoy their day at Disney, sorry, I know you didn't say it, but I will, Disney, would actually go out of their way to enter in to 
what they already know is gonna be a pitch of some kind. I just wanna go on Space Mountain and eat some Mickey shaped ice cream. I don't want people trying to tell me how I need to lose weight and how they have a supplement for me. And additionally, it's also very messed up that they would pitch you as you're on the job. You have a job, you're on the clock, you're there to do your work and to get paid. And they're trying to interrupt what you're doing to try and pitch their opportunity as the better way. It's just crazy. Luckily, I knew to avoid them. The first day we had this convention, I Googled Herbalife and actually came across John Oliver's MLM episode, a classic. It's on YouTube if you haven't seen it, highly recommend, which started my anti-MLM journey. However, the truly sad part is that I wasn't the main target. The housekeeping profession is majority Hispanic women. John Oliver does a great job talking about how MLMs truly target minority groups, and this was fairly obvious throughout my experience. I speak enough Spanish to talk to my coworkers, and I was able to tell them that this business wasn't stable and that they would be better off sticking with housekeeping, despite how much the Huns made our job sound terrible, which it was sometimes. They hit all the pain points, especially for these Hispanic women. More time with their kids, hitting on their usually Catholic faith, leaving their terrible job, the promises are amazing, but the reality would have just crushed them. This made me more upset than anything, watching how many of my coworkers were pitched during our actual job where you're not allowed to just walk away. That's true, you have a job to do. You're there to provide the housekeeping on these hotel rooms. You can't exactly just walk out the door. They totally got you cornered and trapped into their pitch and they know it and they're taking advantage of it and I hate that. I think that's mostly all I have to say about Herbalife. They were just gross in the rooms and they were worse when they actually opened their mouths. I did also have one time where my boss at housekeeping said that she was joining a clean feminine product company. It sold bleach free tampons and pads and I think some Mydol like supplement. She said that she was getting in early so she would make a ton of money and that if we wanted to join her, we could do it as a side hustle. I was deep into anti MLM at that point and I kind of laughed and told her that I didn't want to sell period products to people and maybe it would be awkward. <laughs> I've done some research and I can't find anything about this MLM except for a Reddit thread about women trying to pitch it. Any idea what this one is? I personally don't know what this one is, but check the comments below. Maybe someone out there does recognize this clean feminine product company. It doesn't ring a bell to me personally, but it totally could be a thing and I just haven't heard of it before. Thanks for everything you do. I love listening to your voice. I also have issues with panic attacks and anxiety and the way you narrate your videos just helps ground me sometimes. I can't wait to see the next one and where you go from here. Thank you so much. I also struggle with panic attacks and anxiety and I have an app on my phone that I go to to listen to other people's soothing voices. So it's kind of funny to hear that my voice is that for you and I'm glad for that. I'm glad that I can offer you some comfort in those times. That's pretty cool. But I love this story. This is such a unique one that I love hearing about, especially because it's literally close to home. <laughs> like I've been to Disney parks, I've stayed in Disney resorts and I can totally totally picture this whole scenario and how those rooms could get easily trashed during an Herbalife convention. And I'm sorry that you had to be the person to deal with that. And the last thing I wanna mention here, because it did come up in your story that Herbalife seemed to be targeting specifically Hispanic women. There is a documentary that talks about this heavily. It's called Betting on Zero. If you're really into anti-MLM content, I'm sure you've seen this already. It's an hour and a half long documentary. I just tried to search for it online and it looks like the only place you can stream it is on on Redbox. It says that it's free to stream. I've never streamed anything on Redbox before, but if you are able to get your hands on this documentary, I would highly recommend it. It talks about Herbalife specifically, but there's also a good chunk of that documentary that focuses in on how Herbalife targets Hispanic communities, and how that's really problematic and how that's damaging. They have victims of the Herbalife scheme come forward and talk about their experience. It's very powerful. So anyway, I just wanted to throw in that recommendation at the end. Thank you for sending in this story. This is definitely a unique perspective that I haven't been able to share before. And I love hearing about these really unique encounters. This one says, hi, Hannah, first and foremost, I want to congratulate you on your pregnancy. I hope you have a smooth delivery and that you enjoy every part of being a new mom. Thank you. I wanted to email you today to speak on my experience with MLMs and how your content may become to a giant realization about my past. I apologize if it's lengthy. I know you say you don't mind, but I still feel like I needed to say that. I have a guilty pleasure and that's reality TV. Me too, sister. I don't watch it as much anymore but during my college years, I watched a lot of reality shows. And so I came across one that particularly piqued my interest. I remember the show itself didn't last long, but I ended up really liking one of the girls on the show. Let's call her A, because she was pursuing an education which resonated with me at the time. I ended up following her on Instagram and kept up with her even after the show ended. I felt really happy for her because
because despite being an influencer and making money that way, she was also going to school to become a speech pathologist. And I found that to be super impressive. College is tough and I can only imagine how much harder it is to continue if you already have a job that pays so well, like being an influencer. I work with influencers in my current job, so I know the perks can be amazing. Anyways, I remember her finally graduating and I even commented on her graduation post and told her that I was rooting for her. And I truly was. I myself graduated, got my first big girl job, moved out of my parents' home and was starting my life as an adult with my cat. Say hi to your fur babies for me. I don't get on social media as much as I used to, but one day I was scrolling through Instagram and saw that A was posting a lot. I'm talking like two to four posts a day. The posts themselves were different from the ones she posted before. A lot of inspirational quotes under the posts of her in various locations around the world, and a lot of quotes about having the financial freedom because of her new job and being able to travel and work by her own schedule. She even mentioned how she retired as a speech pathologist because this new job offered the opportunity to grow financially. I was so shocked because I couldn't imagine what could shift her from that career. After a more in-depth look at her profile, I found the culprit, Monate. English is not my first language, but because of your videos, I learned to pronounce it correctly. I immediately jumped into YouTube, typed in Monate, and thankfully you were one of the first videos that pulled up. Yes. <laughs> Love to hear that. Also, can we talk about this term retiring from your job to go do an MLM? The definition of retiring typically refers to you are retiring from the workforce as a whole. <laughs> if you're leaving speech pathology to go be in an MLM, you're not leaving the workforce. You're just changing jobs. <laughs> you haven't reached retirement age. You're not leaving the workforce for good. You're not collecting on any retirement benefits. You're just leaving one thing to pursue another. That's not retiring. But MLM reps love to use, overuse this word retire because it catches people's attention. And they're like, wait, what? You're 20 something. You just entered the workforce. How can you possibly be retiring? And it serves to pique people's interest into asking, what is it that you're doing? Why did you leave your speech pathology job? They use the word retire, not because that's actually what they're doing or what they actually mean, but because it's flashy. It catches people's eye and it serves to have people inquire about the business opportunity. Even to this day, I cannot believe that she went through all of that schooling only to end up in an MLM. But in a way, it makes sense. Those that thrive in MLMs are the ones that know the most people. They have more opportunities to recruit, so it would make complete sense for someone of her caliber of followers not to struggle to raise in the ranks. From what I've observed, she seems pretty high up in the company and even started her own side business that from what I can tell is a ploy to get girls to work under her in this pyramid scheme. I feel like a lot of MLMs have profited from influencers, so I'm not surprised to see all these influencers using social media as their business platform. Totally agree. People who are trying to recruit you into their MLM will always say, you don't have to have a big following. Don't worry about that. You can totally do this even if you don't have a lot of people following you on social media, which might be true, but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> if you were on a reality TV show and you have this influencing background and there's thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people following you, you already have this built in group of people to pitch to. And if you make a post promoting your MLM and it goes out to a hundred thousand people instead of a hundred people, obviously that gives you the upper hand. And in my opinion, when you see big influencers or even people of celebrity status exploiting that status to get people into their MLM so that they can make more money, that feels really gross to me, especially when you consider the element of parasocial relationships. Wow, I'm really going down a tangent. I hope you're hanging with me. Parasocial relationships refer to someone who perhaps is well known or they have a large following. Maybe they're on TV, in movies, they're a musician, an influencer, anybody like that with lots of people following them. All of those followers to an extent sort of feel like they know that person, that celebrity, that influencer, whoever, because you watch them all the time and you look at their posts all the time. But some people fail to remember that that person, that influencer, that celebrity has no idea that you exist. And that sounds really harsh, but it's true. That's what's going on is there's two sides to this relationship in which one party feels like they know the other person, maybe like they're even friends with the other person. They look up to the other person. They know a lot of details about that person's life, but then here's the other party where that can't be reciprocated in the same way. This person doesn't know that this person exists. So I say all of that because when you consider that there's people who have large followings, 
audiences, fan bases, whatever you wanna call it. And then they join an MLM that's really heavily reliant upon recruiting other humans. You already have this group of loyal, trusting people who feel like they know you and feel like they're your friend and they want to get closer to you in that way. And those people might be a lot more easily manipulated into joining your MLM if you already had that pre-existing following. Does that make sense? I feel like that was really long-winded. This is what I get for not really pre-planning what I'm gonna say and so it's not concise at all. But that is a topic about like celebrities joining MLMs that I think is really interesting. Maybe I'll make a whole video on that in the future because there's a lot to get into. Anyway, enough of me blabbing away. Let's get back to your story. The thing that bothers me the most is her message and the effects that it can have on young girls. She's pretty much posting how an MLM has given her a better life than education and a professional career. I don't know why, but it really bothers me. I suppose it's because as a first generation college student, I know how difficult it can be to pursue an education. And now there are people out there like her telling young girls that an MLM can give you a better chance at financial stability than a college education. Anyways, I've since unfollowed her, but because of her, I ended up finding you. So a silver lining, I suppose. And because of your videos, I came to the startling discovery that my own mom was at some point involved in an MLM. I remember that when I was young, my mom worked for Mary Kay. It was very popular among most of the moms I knew at the time because most of them were stay at home moms and Mary Kay offered the attractive work from home. I remember my mom going to meetings, sort of like modern day Zoom calls where women would just give testimony of how Mary Kay changed their lives and gave them so much financial freedom. They would also throw around the notion that those that worked hard and took advantage of the opportunity Mary Kay provided would succeed. I also remember my mom asking my dad for $500 to purchase a starter kit, which consisted of a hideous suitcase and a couple samples. We didn't have a lot of money growing up. My parents immigrated to this country and started from scratch. So $500 was a lot of money at the time. Honestly, to me, $500 is still a lot of money. Yeah, it's not insignificant. That's a good chunk of change that we are throwing towards an MLM and hoping that you see some return on that investment. Still, my dad wanted to support my mom and also believed her when she said that it would make us money. It didn't, of course, and I feel like for a long time, my mom blamed herself. Looking back now, I realize how much of that must have affected my mom's self-esteem. She failed at something that promised success if she worked hard enough, and even though my mom did, none of us knew what I know now, that the system was designed for her to fail. Thank you for your videos because it reinforced what I already knew, that my mom is in fact a hard worker, she just came across an MLM. Keep doing the work that you do and have a wonderful Christmas. I'm so glad to hear that the videos are validating to you and that the experiences that we share in these videos resonate with your own personal experience. And that's a great message to end off on, to remember that someone's failure in an MLM is not a reflection of their own work ethic or their amount of time spent or the effort that they've put in. It is true that these business structures are designed for most people to not make any money at all. In order for that small group of people to have financial success, there has to be all of these other people below them who can't have that financial success. Someone has to be there. Someone has to fulfill that role as being the bottom of the pyramid in order for the top of the pyramid to benefit. Someone's always last in line. Someone is always at the bottom and your ability to get yourself out of the bottom very rarely depends on your own hard work or work ethic. It pretty much only depends on if other people agree to sign up and be that last person in line so you don't have to. Super flawed business model and thank you for reminding us of that. This one says, hey Hannah, I first wanna start off by saying congratulations on the new edition. I wish you and AJ all the best of luck and extra pixie dust in your journey into parenthood. It's one of the most rewarding experiences, thank you. She's not here yet, we still have a couple months to go, but this entire video so far, she keeps karate kicking me right in the ribs. I can't even tell you how many times I've had to stop reading to take a deep breath and be like, dude, calm it down, take a nap. The bigger she gets, the less room she has, the more and more I feel like I'm just being beat up from the inside. Anyway, not the point, let's continue your story. Before we dive in, I just wanna add in a trigger warning here. This story mentions topics such as cancer, loss, grief, and hoarding. Also, this is a long one as I included some backstory to paint the whole picture. Here we go. My great grandmother was an avid hoarder. She was sick for many years with cancer, but the hoarding had been going on for decades beforehand. In fact, it only slowed down once she got too 
sick to be able to take herself out to the shops. Eventually, she would try and get any and every member of the family to go out and bring things back for her. If they said no, she would throw a temper tantrum. My nan is one of her four kids. She had two sisters and a brother. When my great grandmother did eventually pass, it cost my nan and her husband hundreds of dollars in repairs and thousands of labor hours trying to get the house back in order. Once it was sorted, all of the children took what they wanted from the stockpile and sold the house. Flash forward almost 15 years later, all four of my great grandmother's children suffer from hoarding tendencies in their own ways. None of them were as bad as she was, but they definitely need help. This includes the youngest of them, my aunt Carol. Carol's daughter Cassie and I are close in age, so we hang out a lot in the summertime. We also spent a lot of time together growing up. Recently, we reconnected after a long time of being out of touch. This is how I learned that Cassie's sister Kellyanne is now an independent distributor with drumroll please, Sensi. Okay, let me get this family tree straight. We have your great grandma. She's the original hoarder in this story. Then we have your great grandma's daughter, Carol. Carol also has hoarding tendencies. Then there's Cassie, who is Carol's daughter, but we're not talking about Cassie. We're talking about Kelly Ann, who is Cassie's sister. Kelly Ann is a Sensi hun, right? I think that's right. <laughs> I haven't read the rest of your story yet, but I'm assuming what this family tree is perhaps suggesting is that maybe these hoarding tendencies kind of run in the family or have been passed down and that that could potentially get Kellyanne in trouble when she's now joining Sensi, which is an MLM, which requires you to buy a lot of product. At first, I didn't say anything about my views on MLMs as we were just coming back together and I didn't want to go around making comments about her sister's livelihood. Side note, I've been anti-MLM since my junior year of high school, but soon enough, I figured out that Cassie was having some concerns about it as well. She had asked me about it in passing and I was honest with her about my opinions because she was open to listening. We both agreed that it was fishy at best, but there was nothing we could do. After all, Kellyanne is fully grown with a husband and children, and we are two 20-somethings that are still in university. And then it all came crashing in. Cassie still lives with Carol, so they spend a lot of time together, but Carol doesn't drive often because she got into an accident when she was young and has been hesitant to drive ever since. That meant that when Cassie was old enough to get her license, she became the chauffeur and the delivery girl. Her mom often is low on funds because she also can't work, which means Cassie pays for fuel out of pocket. She also covers most of the bills, medical expenses, and car maintenance costs. In fact, they just moved into a smaller flat because Carol's old house became so overrun with hoarded junk that they were forced to clean it all up and move out. Cassie paid for it all. Kellyanne, however, has a nice house, multiple vehicles, and lives in a more expensive city. Her husband is in the trades and makes a comfortable living. She did not bother to help her mom when she needed it and left Cassie to deal with it all alone. You might see where this is going. While I thought I knew where it was going, I thought that Kellyanne was going to be a hoarder of Sensi, but now I'm feeling like that's not where we're going anymore. <laughs> it's now been almost two years since the move and somehow Carol is her daughter Kellyanne's number one customer. Initially, Cassie noticed that Carol would get Sensi deliveries every few weeks, but it was usually something small, like a single wax warmer and two cents to go with it. But then it quickly became apparent that these orders were getting more and more frequent. It came to a point where Carol was receiving two, three, sometimes four orders of Sensi products per week. Now, since she doesn't drive, it was Cassie that often found herself making more and more regular trips over to her sister's to pick up her mom's orders. She also was the one that was tasked with finding enough space to store it all in their new flat. Yeah, I was wrong. This took a turn that I did not expect. So it's not Kellyanne, the Sensi rep, who's hoarding her stuff. It's that her Sensi business is pretty much single-handedly being held up by her mom, who does have hoarding tendencies and who is placing insane amounts of orders. I smell some family drama. Cassie did not know what to say to her mom, as my aunt is much like her mother, where if you tell her no, she immediately gives off crazy attitude and effectively throws a temper tantrum. So Cassie tried to talk to Kellyanne. She expressed to her sister that she needed her to stop texting their mom every time a sale came up or a new collection dropped. She explained how they were struggling financially and Sensi was adding to the stress. From what I was told, Kellyanne straight up ignored Cassie and gave her some lame excuse about how their mom was her quote, biggest supporter, and how Kellyanne was so passionate about Sensi, she was going to continue selling as much as she could, even if it was only to her own mom. Since that conversation, things have only gotten worse. 
and Cassie is at a loss for what to do. Not only does she have her own things to deal with, but now her sister is sucking her own mom into funding her MLM scheme and reaching product quotas for her. Cassie and her now partner still pay for all of the necessities. Carol is still struggling for cash to help out, but somehow manages to get her Sensi orders every single week. And of course, Kellyanne still refuses to say anything. In regards to the hoarding, there are now boxes on top of boxes of unopened Sensi products sitting in their flat collecting dust. Carol gives Cassie excuses like they're gifts for so-and-so, or that's gonna be added into my Christmas decor collection whenever she asks about it. Once in a while, Cassie has even resorted to waiting until her mom isn't home and then taking some of it out of the house to donate it or resell it on Facebook Marketplace on her second account. Of course, she feels terrible about lying and hiding things from her mom, but it's all she can do to keep the amount of junk in check. There is unfortunately no happy ending here, but I wanted to share Cassie's experience in case there are any others like her being put into this situation. Kellyanne is not successful in Sensi, and she has one person in her downline, but she will not give up on keeping her mother in as a client. In fact, it's sad to think that if Carol could afford it, she probably would have been recruited into it too. Thank you so much for reading, and I hope this story can help anyone out there who does not know how to save the ones they love from being sucked in. You're not alone. Keep fighting the good fight. Wow, this is a really unique situation. Lots of family dynamics going on here. That's a really tough one because hoarding disorder is a mental health problem. And in this case, Kellyanne is exploiting her own mom's mental health problems so that she can make some money in Sensi. And from the way that you've explained it here, it seems like she knows exactly what she's doing too because she's been asked not to do it and it's been explained to her, hey, your mom can't really afford this. We don't have any more room for any more Scentsy product. Can you stop pitching it to her? Can you stop selling it to her? And she's flat out choosing to ignore that and to continue doing it anyway. Not good. This is a very sticky situation. This took a much different, almost worse turn than I was expecting it to because in this circumstance, it's not just Kellyanne's life that's being affected by her decision to be in an MLM. It's also affecting her mom because she's taking advantage of her mom's horse tendencies to make sales. And it's also affecting Cassie because that puts her in a really weird social position. And Cassie and Carol live together. So Carol buying all of this Scentsy and hoarding it in their house is also affecting Cassie's living circumstances and the kind of environment she has to be in. What a complex story here. This is super unique. And as you said, unfortunately, there's no happy ending. It's just such a complex dynamic. But your situation is kind of the perfect example of how one person's choice to be involved in an MLM doesn't just affect them. It really does have the potential to severely impact the lives of those closest to you too. It kind of just feels like everything's in this gridlock standstill and that no progress can probably be made until Kellyanne decides that she doesn't want to be in Sensi anymore. So if that day ever does come, please write to me about it. Please give me an update. I would love to see that happen for your family because otherwise I can't really see a resolution solution to this either. This is a tough spot to be in, but thank you for sharing this story. This story says, hello, I've enjoyed your videos for a while now, as well as other anti-MLM content. But for the longest time, I had assumed that my area didn't have much MLM stuff. That is until someone attempted to recruit me. A few years ago, I worked a summer job at a small shop for a local farm and I was all alone. It was very small and somewhat cramped and it didn't have AC, but it was so quiet and peaceful and I enjoyed meeting locals. Since it was the peak of summer, a lot of parents would bring their children in and stop in the store for water or snacks. 90% of the patrons were families with small children. This is relevant. It had been a slow day, so when this woman came in with her three children, I was happy to talk about the local products in the store and the animals on the farm. Then, out of the blue, she starts talking about how I seemed like an entrepreneurial young lady with a smart business sense and started asking about college. I'm embarrassed to admit that I didn't pick up on the red flag right away. So I mentioned that I was planning on starting college in September and she started spouting off about funding and helping pay off student loans and how working for myself on my own time could help me succeed. By then I realized what was happening and started preparing myself to let her down easy, but that's when it got wild. She started going into detail about the products and I realized that it was an adult toy MLM. Pure romance, I learned later from her business card. My jaw was 
on the floor. Sure, she was talking very vaguely about the products, but her kids were right there. <laughs> we were in a child-friendly establishment where some random kid could come bursting into the store at any moment, and she was trying to both sell me and convince me to sell adult products. I was too socially awkward to interrupt her, so she just kept going and going. The real kicker though, is that when she went to grab a business card from her purse, her face went sheet white. I hadn't been able to get a single word in while she was giving me the pitch, and maybe that pause was enough for her to think straight, because as she grabbed it, she suddenly asked, you're 18, right? <laughs> I explained to her that I was in fact 18, but only by two days at that point, and that I was the oldest girl working there. For example, if she had tried this on the previous day's clerks, she would have been pitching to a 16 year old, which is totally against Pure Romance's policies from what I understand. Heck, if she had tried this on me a few days previously, she would have been pitching to a 17 year old. I don't know whether it was the realization that she had barely nearly messed up or my bluntness, but she hastily bought a bottle of water and left. However, she did leave the business card behind, which promptly got thrown in the trash. I was able to see the parking lot from the store and I happened to look out as she was driving away. Sure enough, the back of her minivan was covered in boss babe and pure romance stickers. <laughs> Anyways, I know this story isn't very exciting, but I wanted to share it because it's yet another example of the length these MLM huns will go to pad out their downline. I mostly hear stories about adults and college age people being targeted, but literally every other girl on the schedule other than me was in high school. And honestly, if I wasn't aware of MLMs at the time, making a little money on the side while attending college would have sounded really nice. Through my summer job and babysitting, I'd saved up a decent amount of money, so I probably could have bought a starter pack. I'm just glad I got exposed to anti-MLM content early so I wasn't sucked in. Thank you so much for your amazing content. Anti-MLM content was my first step into opening my eyes to the world around me, so I really appreciate what you do. Also, I understand if you don't post this because of YouTube shenanigans. I just wanted to share. Oh, I'm sharing it. This is gold. Just to be clear that most, if not all MLMs, I have yet to come across one that does not follow this policy. They require you to be at least 18 years of age before you can sign up. However, because of the nature of Pure Romance's products, I can imagine that that is especially important <laughs> to make sure that you're not trying to convince a high schooler to sign up to sell adult toys, okay? I feel like that should have been question number one that she had for you. Hey, how old are you? Are you 18 yet? I guess she did ask you about college pretty early on, so that would have been a good indicator that you were probably 18 by that point. I wonder how this conversation would have gone differently if you didn't indicate that you were going to college or that college was still a couple of years away for you or whatever. Maybe she would have backed out of her pitch at that point, who knows? The thing that's standing out the most to me from your story is that at the time of this story, you already knew what MLMs were. You were already familiar with this business model and you've already done the work of educating yourself on why it's something you should not get involved with. And I love hearing young adults report that. Newly 18 year olds or people of college age, that is a huge target for MLM companies because you have to remember that these are recruitment based schemes and without new people constantly joining, these schemes can't continue to work. So while MLM reps are over here fighting for this limited resource of people over 18 to recruit, there's also people in the world who are coming of age and turning 18 every day. And you're crossing that threshold from being an adolescent who's off limits to now being fair game as MLM pre. So when all of these older generations are picked over, people realize, okay, now I need to focus my attention on these people who have just graduated high school, who may not know where they're going in life. They might not have a clear path as far as the workforce or college or whatever. These people are newly 18. They're very vulnerable. There's a good chance that they're not educated on MLMs yet because it's not something they've encountered yet. Ding, ding, ding. Perfect people to prey on for MLMs. So the point is, I love hearing that you as as an 18 year old already had that knowledge in your back pocket and you could protect yourself and that you didn't fall for this. Not every 18 year old can say the same thing. I did not know what an MLM was when I was 18, but I did get pitched for MLMs for the first time when I was in those first years of college. YouTube videos specifically, they're accessible to people of all ages. It's a very popular platform for young people. And as time goes on, I'm confident that there's gonna be even more and more anti MLM consumer education type content 
on YouTube for young people to access and to learn about these things before they encounter them. So I love to hear that. Thank goodness you did not get involved with pure romance that one fateful day. <laughs> and thank you for sending in this story. This one says, hi, Hannah, I've been binge watching your MLM horror stories playlist and realized that I have one of my own I'd like to share. It's more of a near miss than a horror story, but the lies this person was willing to tell me and the position they were willing to put me in to get a recruit are actually terrifying. About 15 years ago, I was struggling with a serious mental health crisis. I was broke, single, had no social network, very little support, and was incapable of holding down even a part-time job due to my health. My sister invited me to a Nutramedics party. I had no idea what it was, but being lonely, I was excited to go. There were lots of hand and face creams, a meditation, and then the products were pulled out for us to buy. I had no money to buy anything, of course, but the Nutramedics lady, let's call her Jan, insisted that if I threw my own party and sold enough products to my friends that she would be able to give me the starter pack for free. Excited by the idea of having people over and receiving free stuff, I agreed. Over the next week, Jan called a few times to organize the party and wanted to know some information about me to find out if I was a good fit to join to be a distributor. I was really hesitant because of my situation. I was feeling surprisingly realistic about my ability to actually do the job. I was cautious about pyramid schemes because my parents had been suckered into Amway and I saw how much of a fail that was. So I was really honest with her. I told her everything, all of my concerns, and I asked heaps of questions. I told her in depth about my situation. I was actively mentally ill and could hardly look after myself. I didn't have a car to travel to throw parties. I didn't have an internet connection to access the website, to place orders, or to sign people up. I didn't have any friends to sell or recruit. I suffered with social anxiety, which limited my ability to even speak to a stranger, let alone try and sell them anything. And I didn't have the money to even pay for the sign up pack, let alone any of the products that I would need to throw the parties and have stock to sell. And this is the part that haunts me. She assured me that I wasn't alone, that she had helped other girls who had been in situations just like mine become distributors, who walked to people's houses to throw parties, who went to the library to access the internet, who had become social butterflies and made tons of new friends who had become really successful and changed their lives. She suggested I borrow money from my family or friends to get the products I needed. This really wasn't an option for me, thank goodness. I don't know if she was telling the truth about these other girls' success, but the chances are she was either lying about them existing or she had preyed on vulnerable girls and was lying about their success. It freaks me out that she was so willing to ignore the fact that I was completely incapable of being successful and happy to use me to get a recruit and make sales from my party. The way this feels to me is that you have every objection in the book, rightfully so, and they're all legitimate objections, right? I don't have the money, I don't have a car, I don't have internet, I don't know many people who would be willing to sign up for this kind of thing, I'm really socially anxious, this would make me really uncomfortable to do. Those are all extremely legitimate reasons that somebody would not want to get involved with an MLM. And part of your job as an MLM rep is to overcome these objections. So when someone tells you, oh, sorry, I don't have internet access, you can say, oh, go to the library. I don't have a car to go to parties. Oh, well, you can just walk instead. Like there's always something that they have on the ready to overcome your objection, but their suggestions are not convenient, not really feasible, not reasonable. But what they're really trying to do is make it seem like even despite your circumstances, you can still do this and your life is going to be better because of it. And when they have so many of these rebuttals at the ready just to fire back to overcome your objection, it kind of gives off the impression like it's a script or like that's just something they have in their back pocket to whip out. Not that she's actually being truthful that she has recruited people with your similar circumstances, but of course that's what she's going to tell you because it's her job to try and recruit you at all costs. I asked her, has anyone ever pulled out of a party before? No. Has anyone ever canceled an order before? No, never. Has anyone you signed up given up or not been successful? No. Yeah, right. I asked these questions because I was thinking of doing all of them. I was so sure that I couldn't do the job that after my party, I just never contacted her again. I didn't sell enough product to cover the starter pack, but she let me have it for free anyway. I got pretty close. She sent me a few messages trying to convince me to stay active, but I just couldn't and do it. Looking back, I know I dodged a bullet. I feel sick knowing how happy she was to prey on someone who was so clearly vulnerable and unfit to do the job to use them to make money. I hate the thought that there may have been other girls like me who did sign up, did borrow money, and had their situation made even worse. It's gross, it's yucky, 
Becky, it makes me shudder to think about her doing this to other people. These days, I run my own successful, legit business, have a loving family, and I'm happy and healthy. Unfortunately, my mom is caught in the revolving MLM hustle. She spends a fortune and a ton of time on these ventures and never sees anything in return. I appreciate anti-MLM content like yours so much so I can stay up to date on how she's being conned this time and try to open her eyes to what's really going on. Love ya guts, keep it up. <laughs> That's a fun little sign off, I like that one. It's hard to have a close family member in an MLM. That's a really tough position to be in. And there's one little piece of your story here that's really making me think. It's where you're saying it's crazy how she still wanted to recruit me even though I was clearly unfit for the job and probably wasn't gonna do a good job at it. You listed a variety of very good reasons why this probably wasn't gonna be a good fit for you, but she didn't care. She was still trying to go after you as a recruit anyway. And it's kind of making me wonder why would she go after you that hard if you've already made it clear that like, even if I did sign up, I'm probably not gonna do a very good job through no fault of your own, mind you. It's almost like she's not looking at the long-term longevity of having you as a recruit because if you're in an MLM, wouldn't you want people to join who are like dedicated and determined and they fully bought into all of these claims and they're fully on board and they have all the resources and they wanna work hard at it. Like that's the kind of person you want on your team. You don't necessarily want the kind of person who's like, I'm not really into it. I don't really wanna do it. I don't think I would be good at it. Just from like a classic hiring standpoint, like wouldn't you want this person over here who's super motivated and super on board over the person who wants nothing at all to do with it and they're very hard to convince? If I was in an MLM and I was seeking out recruits, I would really want those people who are fully in it, who are motivated and determined to go out there and sell the product and to recruit people of their own. Because in the long run, that's the kind of downline member that's gonna make me the most money. <laughs> they're the kind of person I'm gonna benefit off the most versus someone who joins, who really isn't into it, who doesn't work the biz, who gets a starter kit, but doesn't do anything with it. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's fascinating that she would see you as a potential recruit. You've given her every objection in the world. You're not in it. You don't want to do it, but she's still choosing to pursue you. And I can't imagine that she thinks that that would work out for her in the long run, but it might work out for her in the short term. She might get a quick bonus check for having a recruit. You might have filled out some kind of quota for her. Maybe she would have hit a new rank or something. And so it has me wondering if she really has tunnel vision on you as her short-term solution to reach whatever goal is right in front of her. And maybe she's thinking like, well, an unmotivated recruit is better than no recruits at all. Or she's thinking, okay, this person isn't fully on board right now, but when she's in it, she'll catch the vision or something, or we'll brainwash her enough that eventually one day she'll be on board. I don't know. I guess I don't really know what I'm trying to say here. I guess it's just interesting to me that MLM reps will continue to put all this time and energy into people who don't want what they have to offer. And you would never see that in a traditional setting for a traditional job. A hiring manager for a legitimate company is going to put their time and energy towards the candidates who want the job. They're not going to pay any attention to all these people who have zero interest in being an employee for them. And I guess the bottom line is that in MLMs, it's not always about signing up a quality recruit. Sometimes it really is just a numbers game and it's just a warm body to come and fill this position so I can get this bonus. This is just another way that MLMs really differentiate themselves from a traditional job or a traditional workplace and really expose themselves for being more of a money-making scheme. And with that, my friends, that's all the stories I have for you for this MLM Horror Stories video. Once again, my inbox is always open. If you have your own story that you would like to send, please do it. I would love to have it. I would love to read it. The instructions for how to do that are down below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon.